Welcome to Kadam, the Small Steps podcast where we try to showcase individual perspectives of recent graduates about different pathways of life. I am Arjun Singh. I am Himansh. And together, we will try to uncover what it means to have a traditional career. This podcast is all about experiences. And before we invite guests to share theirs, we thought we'd share our own. In the first part of this episode, we talked about my journey. And now, let's dive into our jets. Arjit graduated with a Bachelor's of Industrial Design from Auburn University located in Alabama, United States. Born to an engineer dad and a fashion designer in New Delhi, he possesses both technical and aesthetic skills. As a kid, he was always found sitting in the back of the class sketching cars. But since graduating in May 2019, he has had two different positions. Even though he has had a rocky road in his career, it seems uh, he has found something that he really likes now. So Arjun, before we dive into your jobs, let's talk about why you went into design, because we both took science in our 11th grade. And instead, we diverged into two different paths. I chose the engineering route, and you went on to design. So when and how did that decision came about? Okay, so that kind of comes from when I think I was in, in the seventh or eighth grade age. Um, what happened was I was usually, you know, sitting in the back of the class or, like you said, you know, either sketching cars or, you know, using a lot of different materials to just kind of create whatever I could um, for like best out of waste competitions and stuff like that, right? So whether that was just creating like a small pool table with cardboard boxes that I could find in house or stuff like that, that was always something that I was found doing. And, you know, believe it or not, it was something that came out of not just, you know, the passion for creating those products, but also just because as a kid, you just, you find, or you want to find some things that you really like, right? So combining some of those things, I was always just doing that, doing sketching and stuff like that. And initially I wanted to be an automotive designer, but that maybe changed somewhat as I was, as I was maybe, you know, getting into the admissions part of the process of coming to the United States to study, right? So my parents initially told me that I shouldn't really do automotive design as my undergrad, just because they thought that product design was going to be somewhat of a broader field, um, which really, really, I think to this day now makes a lot more sense to me, right? So when I first um, in seventh or eighth grade was passionate about des- designing just cars. I was just doing that, right? I wasn't even thinking about anything else. And, and it was always just about, you know, making sure that I was going to be working for either like BMW or, or, or a brand like that. So it was always the passion for cars that kind of drew me into that field. Now, when that was happening, I initially thought that I needed science as a field um, in 11th and 12th grade to be able to work towards that degree. So in India, I know that that's what they care about. When I was actually coming here, however, um, it seemed like that was not something that was required. Um, So the 11th and 12th grade science subjects were not required, but I think they helped me somewhat just because those were things that were again repeated in some of those classes in college as well. So after I made the decision of coming to the United States to study product design, I was looking for a few different colleges and, and picked Auburn just because it was one of the best um, industrial design colleges in the United States at the time. So yes, it is a little bit different than you know what I initially wanted to do maybe, but I think it was a great decision just because using some of those skills from the science kind of side of things and making sure that I can problem solve to create products um, is where I wanted to go or is that is where I kind of landed into uh, and I think that was a great decision. Yeah so you did say your parents advised you to go for industrial design or automotive design right because I think they thought that it was a safer choice comparatively if I'm not wrong. Right. I guess there's just a bias against design in India. I'm sure you can say something about that later. But 
how uh, difficult was that decision coming as a family? Like, okay, I want to go into design and I want to go into design hundreds of miles away from my family. So how difficult was that? I think, I think it was, it was more about passion, right? So as a kid, like I said, you know, I was always sketching cars and stuff and yes, it wasn't automotive design that I was, I was going for, but as a product designer, there's a lot of people that go into that automotive design of things, right? So as a, even now I could do a master's and go into the automotive side of things, but I think I've enjoyed problem solving way more than, you know, just the aesthetic side of things. Um, there's a lot of people that are just doing that, you know, they're just focused on the aesthetics of the product. But I think Auburn Industrial Design actually teaches you a lot more than just how to focus on how a product looks, but how it works. And there's a huge, huge um, quote in design, uh, you know, which says form follows function, how something works before how something needs to look. And I think that's very, very important. So Auburn really focuses on that, right? So Auburn really focuses on the form follows function kind of side of things, which basically pushes on function first and then how it looks. Um, so form basically is supposed to be following the function side of things, which is really, really interesting just because everything you see around you, you know, even from cars, which are meant to be aerodynamic, right? But the aerodynamism actually shows that they're fast. That actually is triggered by something in physics, right? So the design of a car, let's say, if you look at a Ferrari, even if it's standing in a place, you're going to say it's a very dynamic car. It looks like it's going to go fast just because of the shape of it. But the shape of it, again, is physics side of things. And so that's where the form follows function side of things comes, comes through. Okay. So you really got into industrial design. Or if you say, like, the part we differentiate between having that UX being more important than the aesthetic or the UI. So how did you find UX? Like, you've told me many times that you've actually been fascinated with it for a long time now. So was it Auburn who taught you this or did you find it on your own? I think UX um, is, is a field that's not just focused on apps, right? So that's something that a lot of people are kind of taught to maybe believe is that UX, as in the user experience, is only focused on the apps or, or a website side of things, but actually it comes from the physical side of things, right? So if, honestly, if you search product design, maybe about even three years before today, it would have been physical product design, which is now turned into the digital side of things. So everybody needs a website, everybody needs an app. And so that's where it's kind of moved towards. Now in the last semester, you know, my thesis semester, if you may, um, I was supposed to be choosing my own project and I could just choose whatever I wanted. It was, a, it was an open studio, what we call it. And so I was basically allowed to choose whatever I kind of wanted to do with that. And that's when I kind of focused into the app side of things. I just, like I said, you know, when I searched, when I was, of course, you know, as, as, a, as a person that was about to graduate, I was looking for jobs. And as soon as you say product design, all I could see was app, app, app website, 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 everybody wants to know how to code, everybody wants to know how to use all those UX design software. And that was somewhat of a push that I got from my own inside, you know, saying that that could just expand my product portfolio on. So I started doing that, right? And so I learned Adobe XD, I looked at a couple other software that were, you know, available at the time, Figma and stuff like that. And so, Got into that, learned that, and applied those physical product design unique or unanimous functions and put them or translated them into the app that I designed. And I think, you know, it is, I think, humbling to say that, that my professor in the end said that that was one of the best that came out of an Auburn Industrial Design student. That's also because we're not taught that, right? So our professor actually didn't teach us a whole lot of that. Of course, there was things that he was talking to me about, 
but it was up to me to maybe create or make sure that I was going to be able to apply all those UX functions and put them into a user interface that was going to be easy to use and also something that is enjoyable to look at. So your inclination towards user experience did have an effect on your last project in, uh, in the last semester, right? How, right? how did that inclination affect you while searching your jobs after you graduated? Were you looking for those similar jobs or were you looking for your, you know, regular industry design jobs that do exist? I would probably say that I maybe applied to, I would think over 200 jobs, right? As a, as a person on a visa and as a person that's graduating in an industrial design program at a time where, like I said, the UX has been so much more pushed towards, um, I was looking for whatever I could find. Yes, I was passionate about a few things and that's what I wanted to go into and explore, but more or less it was about finding a position that works. I knew it was just going to be my first job and I've heard from all my professors and all my peers and mentors that your first job is not what really is something that you usually land up with or, or usually that you kind of continue to do. And so almost just about finding that, that position and not the right position. I think it's about how you make a position right, right? And so that's what's more important. And so I think what I wanted was to pe for people to respect me, but also for me to be able to gain those skills from them. Making sure I was going to be able to grow. Because it was my first role, I wasn't really looking for the perfect position. I was looking for a position where I was going to be able to use some of those skills that I had learned at school, but also expand that product portfolio, that those skills, expand those you know, just the terminology, let's say, and grow that into something that would that was going to be useful in the future. Okay. You didn't mention to me in the past how you've had a rocky road coming out of graduation. Maybe it's the times in the United States. Maybe it's been it's always been difficult for someone who's coming from a foreign country. What were your expectations when you were coming in and how did they plan out? If I understand this correctly, Hemanj, this throws me back to not the greatest time of my life. So since the time I graduated to now, I think I've had a tougher career path than maybe what I thought I deserved and wanted. A lot of people around me, of course, you know, had, had that issue or the problem of getting a job in a tough industry, but my experience was a little tougher because I was on a visa in the United States. I think it's been, that's been one of the toughest kind of things to break through, right? I was, I was multiple times, I was on calls with companies that would be asking me about my resumes, about my portfolio, about just, you know, what I had done and what I was planning to get for my next role. And as soon as they would get to know that I was on a visa, that I was going to need sponsorship eventually in the future, they would just be like, oh, we can't do that. We're sorry. Um, you know, do you even want to continue this conversation? That's something that I've also heard on the phone, which was kind of heartbreaking just because you know, coming out of school, I thought I was going to find at least a job, if not the job, just because Auburn Industrial Design was within the top 10, if not the top five in the nation, right? But I was, I was, I, I, I saw a setback just because when I came out of school, really, I don't think there were more than five or seven people out of maybe 40 that graduated in the, industri in the industrial design program that year that had jobs. And I was, you know, in the, in the top half of the class, if not in the top 25% of it, right? And so I was kind of wondering what was going on. I was wondering if I had made a wrong decision of coming to the United States to study just because, of course, you know, my parents had spent a lot of money for me to go here. And so what was I doing wrong, right? I had had on-campus jobs. I had had 
all kinds of experiences that I could have had, right? I was an ambassador for my, for my college. I was, you know, working at the writing center. I was doing other kind of part-time jobs that I could have just to explore different things for my resume. It was disheartening to say the least, right? I graduated in May and I couldn't really secure my first position until November of that year. And, um, you know, I had great interviews, right? Like I said, you know, I had had companies tell me that everything was great, but as soon as they got to know that it was about sponsorship, they would tell me we, we can't do that. And so that was kind of pushing me back you know, step by step telling me that something is wrong being an immigrant in this country and studying something that is not engineering, right? Or something that is not a skill that comes only to those students who attend a STEM major, let's say. And so that wasn't the funnest of times. I had to honestly move on to three people's couches, um, one after the other trying to figure out what my next role was going to be. Um, it, was, it was definitely a tough time, but then, you know, I did get the first job in November. Yeah, so it's a weird time right now as well, and I'm sure students graduating this year might go through something that you have gone through, even though they might be uh, from the same country, because, as the recession and whatever's been going on all around the world, there has been a decrease in the jobs, let's just say that. So it does tell, even if you take the right steps, uh, or as you believe those to be the right steps, you might not get to the right position. So if you can look back and think, okay, maybe I want to redo something. Maybe if I had the chance, you know, I'll go and do this thing differently this time. What would that thing be for you? I think there's a few things that I would possibly change or do differently, right? Um, one of those would be, I would definitely, definitely consider, first of all, either being in a college that gives me a Bachelor of Science for Industrial Design, or something that is a STEM major with industrial design. Or if I was going to go to Auburn, I would definitely have considered taking a couple of minors or just doing a double major, um, getting two degrees or, or whatever it took, right? If that was going to take me five years, I think that would still have been a little bit better just because of how I would have had both of those degrees, both of those experiences, and that would maybe help me get that job. That would be one, I think. The second maybe would be to focus a lot more on getting maybe a better product portfolio, something that sells, something that's eye candy, something that you know you can achieve if you're just sitting in the studio, just doing all that, right? And like I said, because I had those part-time jobs, a lot of times I was spending some time there, but that was because I wanted to of course, get those experiences, but also make some of that, some of that pocket money, right? Some of that money that I was going to be able to maybe use for food or, or go out and, you know, have a good time. Um, help my parents, if you may. So I think those were some of those things that, yeah, I could have avoided and just focused only on getting that product portfolio out, which might have had some kind of a positive effect and maybe getting me a position a little bit sooner. I don't think I have a bad portfolio, but I think I think sometimes that's all it takes, is that a little bit of extra push on just creating and just showing that, that passion of what you do in your free time. And maybe that's where I lacked a little bit. Maybe that's what I would have done just a little bit more. And maybe, you know, use those resources that we were given at school. Just because since I've graduated, I haven't really had those softwares because if you don't have a job, you can't pay for those, right? Every software costs money and in school, you've had access to all of that. You had access to tablets that you use to do digital sketching. 
and just use all the Adobe software or you know the the three D modeling software. I think that's something that I would have pushed myself to do just a little bit more um, if I had the chance to re redo that. Yeah, as an engineer, I won't be able to poke holes in your resume, but I think you know all your weak points, and it, they do say knowing is half the battle. So now that you know what you have to do. What are your plans and what are you willing to do in the future? Going from here, Hamish, I think my future is again not straightforward, but I know where I need to push myself, right? I need to make sure that I can create that eye candy that people look at and they're like, this person knows what he's doing, even if they don't. Um, and I think saying that I have had the experience with creating to solve problems, I can definitely create a product that does that, but now it's time to elevate that product portfolio just a little bit more, right? And get a couple of those different lessons and different courses that I can get that I would have gotten maybe if I took a minor in college, right? So maybe learning how to code, um, maybe learning a couple of animation things, right? A, soft, a software that helps me create something in a different way than just 3D modeling by parametrics. I think that's something that I'm willing to learn, willing to push myself, willing to make sure that that's something that will help me in the future. I think that's where I'm going now. And I think, I think the goal is clear. I think it is to make sure that I get those things under my belt so that to be well-versed enough so when I go out, nobody can deny me a job. So you clearly know what's important and not as a designer. So what about the other people, other designers that are listening, maybe listening to this? What do you think you can tell them that was really important to you? What do they need to prioritize as a designer? I think definitely focus on your portfolio. That's what's going to get you a job. You know, you can have the best of resumes, but I've heard a lot of people tell me that that's not what they're looking for. Um, a lot of times people will not even look at your resume. It's either going to, and even if they do, it's going to be a glance, you know, if they see a big company, if you've interned somewhere, that's what's going to get you a job. Make sure that you can get those internships as early as possible. Don't think about not graduating with your graduating class, right? So if I understand that you want to graduate when your friends are graduating, but that's not what gets you a job. What gets you a job is making sure that some of the bigger brands, you know, some of the bigger companies, some companies that are recognized, people that are making products that are manufactured, that's what's, that's what's most necessary. Making sure that you have design for production, let's say even if it's, or help with a design for production, even before you graduate, if you can do that, you're already going to have the upper hand and it's going to be much easier finding a job. Um, make sure that your portfolio looks impeccable. That's what people are looking for. Your thought process, that's what needs to be shown. It's not just about eye candy. Of course, make sure that those graphics, that those you know, products look good, but what is your thought process? How do you think? How do people perceive what they see? That's what's most important. If you can sell yourself, somebody will definitely buy that. Yeah, thank you, Arjit. You've talked a lot, and I'm sure we'll have other designers come here and share their experiences as well, and we can dive even deeper into designers, maybe how they feel in India and United States, and maybe some other place as well. So thank you, and let them know where they can find you. Oh, just, you know, my Instagram is too urgent to quit. You can find me there. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I have a design account on Instagram as well, which is too urgent to quit dot DES. Um, so dot design. And that would be something that I'm going to be focusing more on, right? I want to push myself to make sure that I am creating better designs, being a better designer, helping the community grow as a design community, but also as people that appreciate good design. Okay, this was your host, Hamish Padia. 
and Arjit Singh. And you've been listening to Kadam, the Small Steps Podcast. If you found value in this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, let us know how we can make this better. A traditional career is always untraditional. Thanks for listening.